Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how I made, I'm going to move the camera so you can see it, this top pergola portion of this modified fairy house. So this was actually a 124 scale uh, like coffee time, I'll show you. So that's what it was supposed to look like. And there will be links down in the video description. <laughs> you can hear my coffee brewing. It's coffee time. Um, where you can purchase your own. It was very, very affordable. So, like with most things, I went a good bit off the rail. And in our November 7th exclusive live stream that's archived in our members only blog, um, we made this prototype that I ended up using. Um, spiral staircase out of popsicle sticks and cord and toothpicks and stuff. I, I, other than the hot glue, I really like it, but we'll, it was a prototype. So, um, now this is not, com whoops, well, gravity. This is not completed yet. In our upcoming November 10th uh, public live stream, we will be completing this piece. So um, we'll have a little bit more little miniature pieces, like the little... Matani milks. Um, we'll have more of those made and stuff and kind of fill in the shelves and we'll be doing the painting and the last bit of landscaping and stuff. But for those of y'all who are interested in how I made this, I don't have a video on this bottom part um, because this is the very first adventure into miniatures. But as soon as I started really going off the rails, um, I started getting video of it. And this video is of this entire top portion including um beep including our our little chairs that i show how to make some modifications of from the original design that came with the kit um the canopy you know just all, all the stuff up on the top i don't cover this flower box but I do cover this flower box so let's go ahead and get started Thank you. 
Alrighty, so I've gone through and I just glued together two pieces of like the box to some Nutella, uh, not Nutella, uh, Nutter Butter cookies. Painted it with Crocodile and Fresh Fern colored folk art acrylics. And then these are just some sticks, y'all, that I had gotten in my yard. And I'm gluing them together with uh, high temperature hot glue. And now I'm coming through with, um, it's around a one to two millimeter hemp twine. And I'm cutting off about um, anywhere from six to 12 inch sections of, of the twine. And I just wanted to do something to kind of hide the fact that everything's joined together with hot glue. Um, and so I just put a bit of hot glue on there. Onto what we're doing. Yeah, the clicking in the background, we have our glass kiln running. So that's it regulating its temperature. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus. I don't even know what it's focusing on. There we go. Okay. So I've smushed one end of our hemp twine into the hot glue. I try to tidy up all those little hot glue strings as we go. Um, and now I'm just going to wrap in a little bit of like an X pattern. It's really, this is not structural, <laughs> so um, do whatever makes you happy. And then when we get to the end, I'm going to do a bit of this gel super glue. Right there. And I have this end of a toothpick that I use to keep from gluing myself to my projects directly. And I am just going to spread that down. Just slathering that gel super glue. It takes a minute to dry, but I don't mind that too much for stuff like this. Um, but yeah, and you can see that's how... Oh, that's so blurry. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm doing my best with what we've got. Um, but as you can see, I have a very cluttered background. So, <laughs> Also, first time making a miniatures video. Um, I really think I'm going to go with a little bit more. That's looking a bit scant. So, um, But you can always add in more twine. And honestly, I don't know why I'm being so stingy with it. I think I'm just trying to not, like, overdo it. But you don't really have to worry about adding too little because you can always add more. So I'm actually going to give ourselves about 20 inches this time. Bringing it around that way and then around that way. So I'm just crossing over the top, and then around, and then crossing, and around, and then crossing, and you can kind of stack them, you can have it go in between stuff. I mean, this is, this is not structural, <laughs> so uh, make it fun, make it look cool, and make it in a way that makes you happy. Now this is also a great opportunity if you have an extra little bit of twine hanging around. Is on this last bit, I'm gonna kind of pinch. You can see I'm pinching down here. I'm gonna bring this around one last time and push our twine through. And pull nice and tight. I still think it'd be a good idea to secure it with um, a bit of glue, but this is something that we could hang like a potted plant <laughs> or something decorative from, but uh, we don't necessarily have to just, you know, snip it, make a knot and glue it down. So different options, but I'm going to keep doing this to each of the points on our pergola. And, I don't know, and then kind of kind of go from there. Oh, 
Okay, so like with most things, whenever you're doing it ten times in a row, um, things evolve and change. And so I wanted to show you how that evolved and changed over the past couple of uh, <laughs> beams that I've wrapped. So I am pulling off from my ball of tw hemp twine. Um, let's see, how long actually is this? Almost four feet of hemp but it's uh yeah folded in half so we have a loop here in the middle gluing myself to the project and i'm just going to loop around do a bit of a lark's head knot and this way we don't have to worry about the additional hot glue and by doubling up on our twine it makes our work look significantly more substantial right away and so you can see i've pulled it tight maybe zooming in will help us this time I'm going to try to make sure it just stays in focus um, pulling down and around this beam now of course it's different if you only you know if you're just joining in line as opposed to on the end but I'm kind of just making it up as I go um, if anywhere looks a little empty from twine, I just wrap it. Because again, this is not structural. This is decorative. And so, keeping it snug too. Because I don't want, as the uh, twine relaxes, I don't want it to, um, you know, like this right here is a little bit loose. I don't want that. So I'm going to actually wrap a little bit more and I think this actually looks good so here on the last bit um, I'm going to put down oh work work those are doggy dogs um some of that gel super glue laying both lengths of the hemp and holding it quite snug I'm still using now I have a toothpick I think I was using that before too to just smear that around keep everything nice and uh, kind of just spatula the glue around and I'm going to come in keep these pressed I try to finish my ends off in an inconspicuous spot that way it's not like boom that's the end of my thing but I feel like that looks so much better than what I had done over here um, it just you know, looks a little bit tidier I guess um I'm going to go through and double back up over this area right here, but it just, it makes everything feel a lot more snug too, to where I do feel like if I left this in my car and it got very, very hot and the hot glue gave out, that twine, while not intended to be structural, I feel like this actually um, is doing something, Oops, which is pretty cool. Now, I wouldn't recommend using hemp or anything like this for if you're planning on baking the piece, like if you're using a lot of polymer clay. Um, also, if you plan on leaving your pieces outside, um, hemp rapidly actually deteriorates. Like within like a six month window, it's pretty much rotted through. Um, but again, that's like if it's supporting something in, in full leather exposure. So on like a covered front porch or something like that, um, where it's not getting wet, it'll last longer, but even the humidity and bugs and critters and stuff will sometimes come and chomp on it. So just be mindful uh, of things like that. They do have hemp looking synthetic stuff like acrylics and things like that, um, that you could use in place, but, um, just something to be mindful of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that looks so much better. Okay. <laughs> so now from here, and then where'd my other end go? Yep. And I just whipped that around. Hopefully I was in frame. Probably not though. And just doing I love the little applicator for this gel control super glue. So nice. And then I'm bringing it in. Laying that down. Using our toothpick as a little spatula. And then and I you could use scissors. I just like my uh, flush cutters. And I am still going to try to experiment and have something hanging from right here. Just to see. Sorry for squeaky chairs. This is just how our house sounds. With kiln clicking and chair squeaking. But yeah, so that's how 
our pergola is coming along and it's actually quite quite sturdy for you know sticks and hot glue <laughs> So here I've made a little planter box out of actually the drawer cutouts from these dressers that I had gotten the template of off of Etsy, I believe. Um, and so I do save all of my scrap, especially if there's like a bunch of it. Um, <clears throat> I actually think this one is from the this little set of dresser dresser back here that was from the same kit. Um, or same set, rather, because uh, I kept messing up cutting out the front. So I ate a, a ton of these. Um, and I just keep them all organized in a, uh, like, I'll show you, like, tackle box <laughs> right here. I keep all sorts of odds and ends and little things. I've got some, like, miniature animals and just, I don't know. I'm a hoarder. But... I do like the way that it looks, the little pokey uppy thingies, and I just went through with uh, regular popsicle sticks, unmodified, and just made the center beams and glued it together with this glue that actually came with the miniature kit. So um, I like it because at least with wood, it holds things together pretty quickly, especially if there's a lot of surface area and then it dries quickly and there's not like an overpowering smell. So I don't know where I'm going to use this planter box just yet, but I made it with the same concept as these smaller planter boxes. So I may use them kind of as an edging device. I, I may actually not end up using them at all with this um, pergola setting because with this pergola I am kind of designing it to be let me turn my tripod on the top <laughs> of this like I don't even know what I'm making <laughs> I'm just having fun with it but I had thought that I was going to put the little bistro table and stuff but then I was like you would be really cool if we had like a swing hanging here but I wanted in the design to be able to have I might build a planters around the edge of here that way even whenever I take this off um the planters are still there uh to make it look like you know hanging boxes with like greenery and stuff but I feel like that would actually be detrimental here in the front because then we couldn't uh, see into the rest of the uh, the dollhouse, I suppose. But I do think I'd like that for around everywhere else. And I don't know if I want to do like fence or banister or these planter boxes. I just, I don't know yet. I do not know. So I'm going to keep playing around and making stuff and see what happens.
So I've been up to making some little furniture. Now with this, it didn't really specify in the instructions what kind of glue I was supposed to use. I am glad I used hot glue to attach the uh, post into the umbrella because it kind of gives a little bit more stability. Um, but I used the alcohol glue on this top square and you can see it left a little discolored darkened mark and I used the white glue um, like basically Elmer's school glue looking stuff um, to attach the fabric to the top. I used um, like white Elmer's glue style just their their bottle of white glue that came with the kit to attach the fabric to the top and it left like dark spots as well so I went through with a sharpie and just made some little spirals but um I don't know I think that's really cute Boop. and also I don't know if I talked to y'all about this yet but I am pretty certain I got a video of making it I went through and added some texture for the sand um or kind of the bare earth patches this is actually the sawdust from uh cutting up these sticks that I found in my yard and then this is like coarse, a mixture of coarse and fine, like just turf from like the hobby section, like of making like uh, dioramas and stuff. And I mixed that in with the white glue as well. I'd like to maybe spray it with a f fixative or something, maybe like an acrylic sealer just to help stabilize it a little bit more. Um, but again, I'm quite new to this, so I don't know if there's a standard practice, but I really liked mixing it together and clumping it up around our hot glue that I had used to attach the bases. And I was thinking about going through and doing that on all of those points, but um, the finer details of this build will be done in an upcoming live stream. But next, I am... Oh, and I also... Oops. Well, super durable. <laughs> there's that at least. Um... I didn't make the metal rings quite big enough, um, I guess, so it doesn't fit all the way around the edge without having a gap, so I just fit it kind of offset onto the bottom of these little bar stools that I attached with hot glue because I hoped that if I made them, oops, unlevel or broke them off entirely, that the hot glue like kind of peels away or I could at least reheat it and then reattach it. So. At least was my thought process. So now that I've ripped that off, let's actually go ahead and, oops, bump into the tripod and drop my glue gun. So I'm just going to do a squeeze. And you can see it took that paint just right with it, but that's okay. I'm not sweating it. So there we are. Oops, oh, and I broke <laughs> the hot glue from there as well. So I'm trying to gauge between what's enough hot glue and what's too much hot glue and apparently what's too little hot glue um oh no and that just slid down into the hot glue i had just placed oh other okay yeah well it still worked ouch and uh so if there's any clumps pointing like sticking up um we can try to smoosh those down or we can sand this after the fact and I've all but burnt the nerve endings off my fingertips today from this hot glue, but that's that's all right as well. So yeah, that's not gonna sit flat until I get those extra globs of hot glue off. I'm gonna let it set up all the way first. So now I'm going to be attached forever to all of the hot glue strings. Um, <laughs> I went through with some 26 gauge. Uh, enameled wire. Now, I use ParaWire, and they do carry a black enameled wire. I just don't have any in my collection, so I just used silver and then antiqued it with um, some black nail polish. Sorry, I'm fiddling with the with the focus, so I realize this is not the best quality, y'all. I'm doing my best, though. Um, but with, I'm gonna work on having, hopefully, a tidier work surface in the future, but don't hold your breath. Um, so yeah, I just antiqued that down. I wanted to make it look a little bit more cohesive, because there isn't really any silver ornamentation anywhere else in this project. And now, 
I'm going to squeeze the heck out of this to try to get it to hold its position just a little bit better. And I also did the glue on these guys. I haven't made the cushions for the seats yet, just because I wanted to kind of get it assembled first and see if I even liked these chairs at all um, before putting in the effort for a seat. So it looks like, well, it looks like it's going to be pretty neat though. Doesn't it? Okay, so I think I'm going to put some bends in these wires to get it to fit a little bit better. Or maybe I just made that worse. No, I just made it worse. Okay, so we'll come in and flatten them back out. Nothing quite like experimentation to keep it spicy. Squeezing these together just a little bit more. So trying to keep stuff nice and centered. Okay. So this looks like it all fits like that. So I'm going to go ahead and place the glue and I feel like this might actually be better designed um, if I like used polymer clay or maybe like had the holes drilled for the wires of the chair to travel through but in, for something this small, I think this should be fine, but we'll see. Whoops, and it doesn't really want to hold at all. So I'm going to see. Oh gosh. So I'm going to try to brace everything together. Oh goodness. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, let's go back into time lapse and struggle a bit. Okay, so I've already kind of come up with some ideas for the chair. I, I feel like it might have been a good idea to have these back two follow instead of snipping the wire there and having this section be a different part. Um, though I am following the design from the um, from the booklet, so it's, it just it is what it is. Um, but I think having that wire come forward and then be bent to come down and this wire come forward and be bent to come down would have um, eliminated this problem of the very dinky connection point here across the back as well as this bit of wobbling that's there so i'm gonna have to let that one dry completely but what i'm gonna do for this one because i actually went through and <laughs> used hot glue to attach the front legs um i just need a little bit uh, more stable of a connection and, and I do feel like the hot glue gives me that just because it's there's maybe a little bit more surface area holding on but and I'm going to be putting cushions on too so that may hide <laughs> uh, the horrible globs of hot glue but we'll see but I'm just setting it against the back and then dragging it up that way it kind of takes some of that hot glue with it without dragging too much up to the edge. So. It's 
So now you can't really see it from the top, but there's a good bit more holding on. Oops. Maybe. Okay. And so also already, that's much more secure or stable feeling at least than what the other chair is. And then going across the front there and I'm just gonna set this wire into that and press and now hopefully before it stabilizes too much we'll set it and make sure that the chairs are a good distance forward and back and I kind of like that very cool the hot glue has a very negative reaction with the wet alcohol glue so I'm going to let that dry completely before coming I'm just gonna glob some on there in the back but we got some cute little chairs Yay! <laughs> so I was looking at this fabric like this faux leather and this pretty decent batting like it's just polyester batting but looking in the instructions of all that little like gluing and folding and stuff and I was like girl you do leather work so I pulled out some of this scrap uh, oil tanned in a really nice, like, olive green tone, like deep green. Like, check that out. That's, that's nice leather, y'all. And I used this hole punch that I, I do have one size bigger, but I wanted to try these ones first just to see, and I do think they're going to be, yeah, they're like silly, too small. <laughs> oh no. But I guess I'm going to go dig out my next hole punch size bigger. Um, but yeah, I just use my hole punch and a heavy hammer on a nylon cutting mat. Like, yeah. So, I'm actually going to bring one of these in with me so I can see how big it's supposed to be <laughs> over to my leather working station. That's going to be off camera, but, uh, yeah. So, I used the biggest hole punch that I have because... <laughs> I'll be darned if I'm using scissors, because there's no way I'd have been able to get such a round circle with scissors or a knife or anything. So, oh yeah, look at that plush. So, I don't know if I should have gone a size smaller, but I kind of like that. So I am going to kind of go through and rub off some of the... Um, the frayed bits and then we can use super glue but I'm gonna try the alcohol glue the alcohol clear glue that they gave me Is that it, what, what is that y'all like I don't even know what alcohol clear glue is supposed to be but I am gonna be bringing it all the way to the edge because I don't want this peeling up on me but I'm doing a very thin layer because I also don't want it oozing on me. Now this leather is still pretty porous, so it's going to soak up. So I want, oops. I just keep doing that, dang it. I guess I'm going to try to use, instead of hot glue on this part, I'm going to use this clear alcohol glue. Because there's a little bit more of a surface to be attached there. again before it sets all the way. I'm just going to kind of shift it as close to the edges as I can. See, so yeah, I'm kind of just filling up the bottom of that and sliding up. And I'm going to leave it right there. Okie dokie. Next one. But yeah, probably my favorite thing about this glue is it's not like getting stuck to my fingers the way that um, super glue has such a tendency. Like, I'm really bad about gluing myself together, y'all. Um, I 
Now it does get a little stringy, that's a bit weird. But the smell isn't bad. I can dig it. And so now, let's do these guys. Now this one, okay, that alcohol glue has dried. So I am going to come through and, oh, make a big old mess. Oh yeah. There we go. With some hot glue. And kind of, no, nope, that's just how it is now. Okay, leave it be. <laughs> the more I try to fix it, the worse it makes it. So I'm just going to leave it be. I was going to try to peel it off of this chair leg, but I'm just making things worse. Okay, so just nobody look at that part later. <laughs> we all start somewhere, right? It's okay for this to be kind of terrible. I don't care if this is my hundredth miniature. It's okay for it to be terrible because I'm having fun. I don't care. Ooh, leather seats. This is the pinnacle of rickety chair luxury. And just the fact that it's already, everything's already painted, I don't have to dye anything, I don't have to stain, makes me very happy. It does give a little bit of a rustic look to it too, having all that, those kinds of frayed edges. There we are. And then I found I have some cut, leftover cutout pieces from uh, other Glowforge projects. So I think I'm going to try to figure out a way to be able to incorporate these either into some of the furniture design or into some of the decorations, but uh, I'm pretty excited about that. So let's see how this looks all stacked into the house. Here we have our base that's, whoops, that still has a whole lot that needs done with it. Oh no, my milk. My milk fell over. And my plant. <laughs> So there we have that. I need to make like two little hanging plants. Whoops. Well, durability test, phase one. That's a decent start. It, this sits a bit rickety on the top here, and I don't want to have to like glue it down, but I may make a wooden frame. I don't know, but I don't want it to sit quite so. Oops. Well, I just smushed some of my grass wasn't dry yet. Oh, I've lost my toothpick. I'll grab a fresh toothpick. Oh, there's my toothpick. So my grass wasn't quite dry yet. The glue in it. So I poked it a bit. Wow, I'm going to have to like zoom out some more. So this is how it's looking. Yeah, I think I may end up gluing this to the top instead of having it be removable just because I'm not very fond of it being uh, rickety. Sorry again for my creaky chair. Okay, so we have... That's pretty cool. I like that. Because if we put like a little tea set up there or something, that'd be pretty neat. I wonder how this guy would look. Just right over there like that. And then down here on the first floor, we could probably set 
these bar stools. Oh, those are right in the walkway. We'll set them over here. So we'll put this pointer over right here. Oh yeah, that looks like we have that there. Oops. I feel so giant and clumsy. <laughs> There's those two little bar stools. I kind of like having a planter right here. But I'm not gluing any of this stuff down until we get it painted and the rest of the landscaping done because there is a lot of landscaping to do on this piece. So, and we will do that in my upcoming live stream. But I think other than that, this is kind of it for this video. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I had a ton of fun making this piece. So if y'all have uh, any suggestions for my next project, be sure to leave that down below as well. I just, this is my first um, delving into the world of miniatures. And, I mean, granted, I've been making fairy houses for years, but that's kind of, to me, that's different. Because it doesn't have, like, tiny notes and little, like, coffee pots and chairs. Um, <laughs> so, I am uh, really in over my head on this one, I feel like. <laughs> but, yeah, I'd love to hear y'all's suggestions and ideas and, like, all sorts of stuff. But, um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. If you're interested in any of the SVG... Let's try that. If you're interested in any of the SVG files that I developed off of, um, like how I designed my own spiral staircase from scratch and some of these different things, um, we'll be having those in our digital download content um, membership page, <laughs> like that membership level, that page that you have get access to. All of our digital files will be in there and you can use them for a laser cutter, a CNC, a Cricut, or even just printing off on like your regular printer and tracing it out and like cutting it out by hand on cardstock or um, chipboard or something like that. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to go get started and then I'm going to... Nope. Words just don't work today. I'm going to go get started on another project. So until next time, y'all, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>